Okay, UFC 297 just finished. And if you are a South African member of society, if you're a citizen, if you're a South African mixed martial arts fan, then you are a very happy man right now because guess what? Yes, that is true. Drickus Duplessis got the job done, made UFC history in becoming the first ever UFC champion of the world to hail from South Africa. It was a great fight. It went the distance. Sean Strickland was not an easy man to take out, not an easy man to beat or a man to dethrone. It went five rounds, a split decision, but the correct call was made. Drickus Duplessis went out there, pushed the pace got in his face. There was all this talk about his cardio, okay? The commentators made several references to it. In fact, when Drickers was done, he went over and he said straight away, he said, look, I went five rounds. He was very happy about that. He, he should be happy that he's the champion of the world and now he's got a ton of options. But let's talk about the fight. I'm going to go through the entire fight card from top to bottom. Uh, so, Sean Strickland... The way he fights is behind that jab. That is his best weapon. Of course, he's got great grappling. He does have good takedown defense, but tonight Drickus took him down almost at will. I think it was six out of nine takedown attempts for Drickus that was successful. But Sean got back to his feet every single time. But on the feet, predominantly, it was the jab, okay? And when you're fighting Sean Strickland, you've got to put him on the back foot. Israel Adesanya did not do that. Izzy is typically a counterfighter. Sean, you have to put him on the back foot, right? When you're pressuring him, okay, he's stings out that first jab and it, it will connect you and it will cause you to pause. Drickus needed to go again, but often he was trying to attack, he was trying to swing big, massive, powerful shots. Boom, he would get jabbed in the face and he would stop. And that was the story in round one. Of course, Drickus landed some shots. Of course he did. He landed some beautiful high kicks and that left high kick of Drickus was very, very dangerous all night and the left kicks in general to the body as well. Sean did a great job of checking the kicks. Sean didn't get tired at all. He looked like he could have gone 25 rounds. But as the fight progressed, Sean won the opening round. Round two, very close. But the takedowns, he got in there. He didn't do much damage, but he took him down with these, landed some power shots, and then slowly but surely started to turn the tide of the fight. He started to take over. Now, Sean Strickland, i got to say, I was impressed with the man. He walked out. I thought he looked incredibly nervous. He walked out with, you know, the typical American music playing. He, he had the crowd on his side. They all loved Sean Strickland tonight, and a lot of people do, of course, uh, and for good reason. He, he was a great champion and he might be back. But when he walked out, I thought he looked incredibly nervous or you could just say very, very focused and respecting the challenge that he had on the other side. Drickus looked cool, calm and collected like he was another walk in the park, another battle that he expects to finish. Because when you've finished almost every fight that you've won, positive reinforcement, you think it's going to go down like that again. Round one was close. I gave it to Strickland. Round two, Drickus Duplessis got that with the wrestling and the takedowns and landing the powerful shots. Round three, he opened up a big cut on Sean Strickland's eye. Massive right hand and he started finding the mark. As I say, the jab of Strickland, predominantly that's how he fights. What Drickus should have done was go again. And what I mean by that is that you have that initial flurry, right? You swing some powerful shots like Drickus was doing. You eat a jab, but then you got to go again, right? Or faint, faint, drag that jab out of Sean Strickland and then when the jab returns that's when you go so I'm not lecturing the new champion of the world I'm not telling the South African king what to do but use more feints trickers okay more feints will help you in the future but what, what do I know round three he took over he did the damage he opened up the cut on the eye as I said and he was landing powerful shots and the, the look on the face started to change there was cause for concern in the corner of Strickland okay they said listen we did not like that round at all you gotta step on the gas you gotta go for it you gotta fight to the death Dude. Dick to dick, nipple to nipple. That's not what we saw. We saw a very tactical, technical approach from Sean Strickland. Very strategic as well. Round four, more of the same, right? Drick is growing in confidence, starting to follow up more, starting to swing big, wild shots that a lot of the time were finding the mark. Sean was okay. He never got dropped. He did get rocked a couple of times, but nothing too crazy. But in round five, Sean turned up the gas. Sean stepped on the pedal. He knew right now it's championship rounds. It's now or never. Now's the time to fight dick to dick. Nipple to nipple. Now's the time to go for it because guess what? If you don't, you're going to lose this fight. In round five, Sean did turn it around. I thought he won round five and so did 
the judges on the scorecards. Uh, it was an entertaining fight. It was an entertaining fight. I think the people of Canada really enjoyed it. It was nice to see that Drake has kind of turned the crowd around. They were very pro Sean Strickland. Towards the end, they were chanting, you know, DDP, DDP, because he was going for it. He was pushing the pace. He was swinging. He was being a little bit reckless, okay? Sean's methodical. For all this talk of him being a psycho and all the rest of it, Sean is very strategic when he's in there and he's very calm, composed and collected. He knows what he's good at. He's got good takedown defense, but that shows how good the wrestling was of Drickus Duplessis. He's got a beautiful jab. His gas tank is ridiculous and he showed an amazing ability to get back to his feet. It's not easy to do what he did in that regard, right? Drickus took him down, but wasn't even able really to land anything of significance. Uh, so well done to Sean for what he's accomplished so far, right? Well done for going five rounds with Drickus Duplessis. Only the second person that Drickus has ever fought to do that. But of course, well done to the new champion, Drickus Duplessis. Listen, he had to fight through some adversity. That jab of Sean Strickland was busting him up, catching the eye. The eye was all swollen. He was essentially fighting with one eye, which is impossible to do. No man alive can fight with one eye. You know what I'm saying? Um, I would have liked to see more defense from Drickus regarding the jab. If you study Sean, you will see that when he fights, that's his best weapon. And of course, the front kicks, the teeps to the midsection, he kind of abandoned them after round one. But the jab, right? You parried the jab, you slipped the jab, you blocked the jab. He wasn't really doing too much of that. So going forward, a little something to work on, okay? And then when the jab returns here, that's when you go again. That's when you got to pressure him, okay? But listen, as I said, well done to Drickus Duplessis. Uh, incredible fight. And of course, he's got a lot of options going forward. So who will be next? Well, we know Hamzat Chimiev has been tweeting and he's been chirping for a shot at the middleweight title for quite some time. Now it's my time. <laughs> but Israel Adesanya was the guy that Drix Duplessis called out and I've got a funny feeling that that will be the next middleweight title fight. Right now, I have to tell you, man, I'm really enjoying this. I would love it. There was another guy who tried to take my shine. He lost his shine, now I have your shine. You didn't get into the cage tonight, but Israel Adesanya, get your back in the UFC so we can settle the score. Anyway, moving on, Raquel Pennington, well done to her. A long journey inside the UFC's octagon. Myra Bueno Silva looked good early. The boxing of Raquel Pennington was phenomenal, right? But Myra Bueno Silva got very tight. By the end of round three, she was kind of a spent force, right? Uh, and Raquel Pennington stuck to the job, used the boxing, looked great, escaped a couple of uh, dicey moments there and became the champion. Congratulations to Rocky Raquel Pennington. Before that, Mike Malott, Canada's savior, the next George St. Pierre, a man put on there to hopefully have a great performance and become a superstar for Canada, didn't get the job done. He started well. He looks great in rounds one and two. It was a technical, tactical approach. It wasn't like a blazing, swinging slugfest. He was damaging the legs of Neil Magny, just like he and Gary did in the fight prior. And it looked like he was kind of going to coast towards a victory. But in round three, the veteran, the man that's had so many fights inside the UFC, didn't give up on himself, took him down up against the fence, got on top, got them out and finished him by ground and pound. Well done to Neil Magny. You can never count that man out. Now for Mike Malott, he'll be back, okay? His first loss in the UFC and he'll learn from that, okay? Fights like that, okay? Sometimes as a fighter, you need those. That's how you progress. That's how you look at yourself and you reevaluate and you think, what do I need to do to improve? So chin up Mike Malott, Neil Magny, well done. Chris Curtis, Marc-Andre Barriot, that went to a decision. Very close fight, both men. It was kind of like a sparring match, if I'm honest. Neither man really pushed the pace. Neither man had a sense of urgency. But it heated up. Round three was kind of interesting. That was fun. One and two, you know, both men getting a little frustrated. Very, very close fight. But Chris Curtis got the job done. Got the hand raised and then opening up the main card. Arnold Almighty Allen. Sadly, for the people of England and, of course, for Arnold Allen, it wasn't his night. Uh, he looks good. He looks smooth. The hands were low. He looks confident. When Movsar went in with the takedowns, he was able to scramble. The Granby rolls were beautiful. And I thought Arnold looked really good. And I thought it looks like he might get a victory here against a very tough, undefeated opponent. Uh, there was a little bit of controversy. I think it was, was it round two? When he went in, he had uh, Movsar in a headlock. He was kneeing. Movsar was touching the ground, playing that old game. Arnold was pulling him up. He was kneeing. He was touching the ground. He was kneeing. Opened up a huge cut. Mark Goddard stepped in. 
gave him a hard warning, okay? So people online are saying, well, he should not have stepped in. Either it was a foul and take a point, or it wasn't a foul and let the momentum of the fight continue. In round three, Movsar Evloev, you know, kind of uh, took over a little bit. Well done to Movsar Evloev. And unfortunately for Arnold Allen, you will be back. You're still a young guy, and I think you've still got a tremendous amount to give to the sport of mixed martial arts. But... Tonight belongs to South Africa. Drix Duplessis, congratulations, my brother. Hopefully, we'll be having a little interview on here with the champ himself. And Sean Strickland, he'll be back, of course. He's a very popular guy. He's still a young guy himself, and he will rebound in style, no doubt. Thank you for watching. See you soon.